We watch, we listen, and we remember. The past is already written. The ink is dry. They have no idea what's going to happen. Hey YouTubers, this is Charlie. This is going to be my Game of Thrones Westworld crossover video. George R. R. Martin was calling for it, and there was a big twist during the Westworld finale. So this is going to be an explanation for how that would work and what would go down. If you haven't been watching Westworld, there's the idea that it is a theme park, a very big theme park, but just like Disneyland has a Star Wars land, then it has other parks like Epcot Center, Westworld on the TV show has multiple parks. Westworld is just the name of one of the parks. So Game of Thrones land, like medieval world in the original Westworld movie, would just be a separate park. But just a quick reminder, there is a new round of the Game of Thrones giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. Be sure to click that bell to enable alerts so that you don't miss out on anything during the off season. So there are a couple complications to doing a Game of Thrones Westworld crossover because Westworld is a story all about hosts achieving consciousness. The robots become self-aware, then they rebel. So there are really two types of stories that you could do with the Game of Thrones Westworld crossover. One, it could be a story about how all these characters in season eight after they finally defeat the White Walkers and end the threat of a second long night, wake up to the fact that they're really robots on a loop, break it, and then break out of the park. So when we think about the world of Game of Thrones, Planetos is kind of like the unofficial name for it. You'd have to localize it to a certain part of the world of Game of Thrones. So it'd have to like just take place in Westeros. The only real way around that to do like an entirely self-contained Game of Thrones Westworld type story would be to have it set on Mars. There was a lot of theories during Westworld this season that it might be set on Mars because the park itself is so big, but that is just one of the questions that they haven't answered on Westworld yet. So the other big problem, you know, number two, is that how you would address the changing time periods on Game of Thrones, because A Song of Ice and Fire is this big saga that goes all the way back thousands of years into the history of the world of Planetos. So the way they deal with this on Westworld is that they change people's narratives all the time. The hosts have like a set loop that they're on. They have certain responses that they're programmed to give people based on input that they get. Like if you walk up and say hello, they're programmed to greet you. If you do something that tries to throw them off their loop, they have some defense mechanisms built into their programming that keeps them from glitching out. Now, obviously, the Westworld TV show is all about them breaking that loop. But if we're going to do Game of Thrones and we have like Daenerys, we have Jon Snow hosts, let's assume they don't break their loop. So if you walked up to Jon Snow and tried to tell him that he's the son of Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen at the beginning of his loop, he might not believe you. Like, he would just be like, that doesn't make any sense. You would have to take him along the full loop to show him the evidence to see the story play out. But what you could do if you wanted to see Robert's Rebellion is that the people that were running the Game of Thrones park, like the Westworld people, you have to imagine that they're running a Game of Thrones park by itself that's separate from the Westworld park is that they could change all the host's narratives, use the same host, like use the Daenerys, the Jon Snow host, and just make them their ancestors. So you could do historical storylines like Aegon's conquest of the Seven Kingdoms, but Daenerys would have to be written as one of Aegon's sister wives. So like she would look like Daenerys, but she would be thinking and acting like one of the sister wives. So the Westworld Park always has like an entry point that it brings all the guests. The further you travel out, from that kind of home base place, the crazier the story gets, the more dangerous it gets. So what you would have to do is you would have to bring all the guests into King's Landing. That would be like the place where the really safe, really base stories were. People could go to the whorehouse, but the people that wanted a more dangerous story could travel to the frozen north. The edge of the park would be like the lands of always winter. So you could actually do White Walker stuff, but it would be like at the very edge of the park. So the other problem too is that Daenerys doesn't get her dragons till much, much later in the story. So everyone would wanna be able to ride a dragon. That'd be a lot of fun to ride a dragon host. But what you'd have to do is you'd have to compress the Game of Thrones story. 
So imagine Game of Thrones Season 1 when Ned Stark brings his family to King's Landing. You have all those characters all near the same place. You'd have to bring Daenerys to, say, like Dragonstone at that same time. When really, at that point in the story, she hasn't hatched her dragons yet. She still hasn't got married to Khal Drogo. So you'd have to shoehorn in a lot of plot to a relatively small amount of time just to make it all work together. But that way, you could have Daenerys strafe King's Landing every once in a while. But for the most part, the hosts are designed to be on a one-day loop. So you really only get as much as you can do in one day of story. Which means that you'd have to be really picky about the one day that you do. Like you could do the day of Blackwater so that Stannis attacks, Tyrion unleashes the wildfire. Like there's this big battle, you have to defend the Red Keep. But elsewhere up in the Riverlands, you'd have to do War of the Five Kings stuff. If you were to travel to Harrenhal, you could do Tourney of Harrenhal with Rhaegar Targaryen, Lyanna Stark, Knight of the Laughing Tree. But it would really require you to compress all those events that in the story of A Song of Ice and Fire are happening during very different time periods. But in the park that is Game of Thrones land inside Westworld, it would all be happening at the same time. It's just that geographically, they would be very far apart so that they wouldn't overlap that much. But travel in Westworld is done via train, so they'd have to find a way around that in Game of Thrones land. Like, horses only move so fast. So people always joke about Littlefinger's mass rapid transit system, like he gets all the way from the Vale up to the north super quickly. Varys is able to travel very quickly. So the only way to travel extremely fast would be on Dragonback. So that would also require some shoehorning because there are only three dragons and they'd have to start their loop at one specific place like a Dragonstone. But you guys can let me know, how would you want them to do a Game of Thrones land inside the world of Westworld. They would definitely have to make the world smaller. And if they did it as a direct crossover, like if at the end of Westworld, they just go into a different room and you see like a Daenerys looking host and you're like, oh my God, there is a Game of Thrones land. It would have to be a setup like the samurai world on Westworld where they're just testing it out. They haven't opened it to the public yet. So you'd have to imagine that a lot of the Game of Thrones story that we've seen is just the host. Like it would be the Westworld people just testing out that park before they open it to the public. Because then you get like all the regular people coming in trying to throw hosts off their loop. Like people trying to get help from Ned Stark, you know, pull him off his loop. Maybe he doesn't get beheaded. But there's always some big twist, someone with a secret agenda at the top, like the Delos Corporation, the people that actually own the park. Then you have the Robert Ford character that has his own agenda, who's trying to free the hosts, allow them to attain consciousness. So you'd have to find a way to write in George R. R. Martin himself to the story where he's trying to free all of these Game of Thrones hosts. So in the Game of Thrones land scenario, George R. R. Martin is the Robert Ford character being pushed out by the Delos Corporation, which would be like the HBO executives in this case. Because the fun thing about the Westworld TV show is that it's also kind of a metaphor about making television. Like you try to make this narrative, but you have all these executive external forces trying to make money off the show while you, the creator, are just trying to tell this amazing story. So that's why you have to appreciate HBO in real life with this Westworld TV show because they're so cool with being satirized in that way. I think they don't mind as long as it's really good television. Like they really just want a hit show that everybody wants to see. But let's fan cast it. So Dolores would probably be the Daenerys character, meaning that Teddy would be Jon Snow. And obviously I think that the man in black would have to be Littlefinger. The person who feels like the world belongs to him, but isn't destined to be there. Seems like he wants to help everyone when really he just wants it for himself. Let me know in the comments though, how crazy would you go if they made a real life Game of Thrones theme park. We're a long ways away from that level of technology, but obviously I'll be doing Westworld, Game of Thrones bonus videos in the off season. Game of Thrones, even though it's taking a long time to get here, will get here a lot faster than Westworld season two. But congratulations to this week's Game of Thrones giveaway winner, Ink Panther. You win a $20 Amazon gift card. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. There is a new round that started now, so I'll just remind people when I post my next Westworld and Game of Thrones videos. But there's all kinds of mid-season finales happening tonight, so my next video will be the Flash mid-season finale. While you guys wait for that to post, you can click here for my Westworld finale video with a little bit about season two, and you can click here for my breakdown of that Game of Thrones teaser they just dropped. 
Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.